everybody. Uh, welcome into the studio. Uh, man, it is starting to uh, get a little bit exciting. I am happy to say that we are getting ready to start taking on some new works and uh, to begin firing pieces, um, which is awesome. What I would love to do today is just run through some really simple, quick ways uh, to pack greenware um, and safely transport it. Uh, you know, as you know, greenware is uh, the most fragile state for clay, um, so we want to try to protect it as much as possible uh, as we try to transport it uh, to the studio or to the kiln or wherever you're headed with it. Um, so what I have today is just your, uh, just a, a kind of heavy duty plastic bin. These ones are from Home Depot. Um, they're actually pretty uh, cheap and decent quality. Uh, but if you just have cardboard, go for a cardboard box as well, and I have some more tips um, that will follow up afterwards in order to reinforce it and just make sure um, it's structurally sound. Uh, fortunately for these guys, there's, they're very strong um, walls on the side, so I don't worry about double boxing it because of the, the strength of the plastic. Um, but if it was cardboard, that would be my only fear. Um, so let's hop right in. The first thing um, that I like to do is actually get some padding on the bottom. Uh, no matter what I'm uh, placing or transporting, I always shoot for some padding. If you have something like styrofoam, uh, like sheets of styrofoam, that is a, a fantastic solution and you can just cut that foam to size, uh, press it right in and you can start um, really building up work. If you don't have any styrofoam, or you do and you just don't want to cut it because it gets those horrible little uh, scraps all over your house, um, then we can just make a solution with newspapers and cardboard. So as far as doing that, uh, what I tend to do is just grab some loose newspaper or uh, recycled brown paper or whatever you have kicking around. I kind of crumple it up so that it just has a little bit of rigidity um, and isn't flat anymore. And I just put I just put enough where there's just a little bit of a buffer or a little bit of, of springiness. From there, I'll go and grab a cardboard box um, and I'll just cut that down to size. So I'll cut it so that it fits directly in the bottom. So what I like to see is that as I press down, there is just a little bit of give um, so that it can handle being uh, set down on things and not actually give any stress to the bottom of the pots. Uh, so just make sure there's a little bit of bounce as you do that. Uh, from there, we're gonna hop in, I'm gonna show you how to pack a couple of different forms. Um, and hopefully these kind of uh, forms will represent most of what you have to deal with. Anything beyond this is probably a real custom scenario um, where the real answer is just take your time and if it doesn't feel right, don't do it. Um, but the most basic to start off will just be some handled mugs. When it comes to handled mugs, um, the way that I like to pack, so we, we put that first foundation layer on. From there, I'll probably just put a really light layer of more newspaper. Or like I said, brown paper. Either way. And then what I'm gonna do is stack the cups inside of the crate or your box. I'm gonna make sure that any of those fragile extremities face the middle. Um, so for these, it's the handles. And I wanna make sure that the handles are all facing the middle, not against the sidewall, so that we can really do our, our best to protect them from uh, having anything touch them. And I'm gonna stack in enough cups um, where it feels pretty dense, but there's enough room that I can just comfortably get packing material around everything. Uh, so one of the biggest things I try to dissuade against is actually having uh, uh, crates that are too loose. Um, really utilize uh, what you're using to pack with uh, to help fill the space. Um, and that way you can use less packing material and it'll be a lot safer for all the cups. Uh, so I tend to, you know, I tend to know these crates pretty well and where I'm comfortable fitting. So on a size like this, I tend to fit about six cups. Um, <clears throat> this uh, crate actually is up at an angle for the sake of the video, so I'm really hoping that you guys can see uh, all of them. Normally I do not pack on an angle, um, as you can imagine, it doesn't make the most sense. Uh, but once I have my cups in there, I'm just going to look at those handles or, or whatever those kind of appendages are. I'm going to make sure 
um, that each of those handles is as far away from one another as possible. In other words, I don't want to allow two handles to sit together incredibly close. We'll just make sure that whatever it is is spaced out properly. Uh, I also want to make sure that nothing is touching a sidewall so that I have at least a half inch between um, the actual uh, raw clay and the side of the crate. Once we've hit that point, I'm going to go back with newspaper and I'm just going to start packing all the way around. So I'm going to start doing this pretty loose so that way I can kind of have that flexibility uh, and I can really work uh, this packing material uh, in between each of these cups. Again, it, uh, to start, I don't want to have to give any real pressure. Like, I don't want to have to push down with force on this packing material. I just want to sneak it in as best as possible. And for some form, sometimes, you know, I will end up kind of wiggling that cup or lifting uh, one side of it up a little bit so that I can you know, tuck any packing material around an overhang. Um, I, I don't put uh, packing materials through the handles. I just don't feel that it's necessary. And I um, am a little fearful that in my haste to unpack, I might break a handle if I did that. So I just go with a lot of small pieces. It's all, it's all recycled paper. Uh, you can do the same technique with uh, bubble wrap as well. And I would say like if you were um, working in really humid areas and things are going to be packed up for a while, bubble wrap may be nice so that you don't get uh, humidity to build up in the paper. The only downside to paper substrates is as humidity builds, um, they kind of lose some of that rigidity, and we really like that rigidity for the sake of packing. Uh, so we're going to keep at it. I'm going to try to not rush this pack job, even though I don't want this video going on forever. Um, it's just never a good idea to rush packing. So take your time, use small pieces, uh, never give pressure onto the clay. And just make sure you really work all that packing material all the way around um, each piece. In one second, we'll do just a little bit of a test. And we'll just look at how much movement uh, there really is. So again, right now I'm just filling any of those holes, any of the spaces in between the forms. We'll just keep gently packing in materials. Right, and that is actually pretty good right there. Uh, what I want to make sure is that if I go to jiggle any of these, uh, that they don't really jiggle. You know, there should be a little bit of movement because we haven't jammed hard material in, and we do want uh, some movement so that as our crate moves, as we wheel it around or carry it, um, it has that flexibility uh, to deal uh, with any of those pressures. Uh, so we want it tight enough uh, where the pieces don't move around, but we don't want it so tight um, that this just feels dense and there's not the ability to have just a little bit of a jiggle. Uh, the other thing, uh, just to save space, um, is that I always tend to pack in layers. Uh, so once I got that first round of cups uh, packed on there, I don't hesitate just to grab some more crumpled paper, um, or at this stage too, if you have bubble wrap, go for a bunch of bubble wrap, treat it the same way as paper, really cover that whole top, and then from there we can just grab another piece of cardboard just like that. We'll lay that one on, and then we are ready to put some more pieces directly on it. Um, so that's the basic ones for cups. Another, uh, so I will should say, cups are probably amongst the easiest things to pack. Uh, minus the sensitivity on handles, 
um, the cups go, go pretty quickly. Um, those circular forms are just structurally very strong on their own. Um, so it's a great one, especially if you haven't transported greenware and you do have cups, start off with those cups and gradually uh, transport the more complicated pieces. You can see how quickly, too, um, this unpacks. Which is just another thing. It's not that we're not packing greenware to ship it over the country, uh, throughout the country. You're really just trying to wrap it up to get it to a killed site, which is hopefully pretty close to, to wherever you live or wherever your studio is. All right, so if it weren't cups, we're just going to pick our next form, um, which would be tiles. So tiles are another one that can be very tricky uh, to ship. And one of the things um, that's important to think about with tiles is where their structural strength is and where their weaknesses are. Uh, so I just have like, some six inch by six inch tiles. Um, where it's weakest is in the center of the flat part of the tile. So in other words, with this tile being placed like this, any pressure on top uh, is a lot of force um, <coughs> and there's the potential to crack. Where it's strongest um, is its vertical strength. So in other words, it, ha it can take a lot of pressure pushing right from the top. It can only take a very little pressure hitting on the face of that. Uh, so any time that you have a thick enough edge or a form that is structurally stronger um, being vertical, you want to make sure that they go into the crate that way as well. Things like tiles um, that have a lot of squared edges that can just be a little trickier to deal with, I will wrap up individually. So if I have uh, a bubble wrap, I will just go for the bubble wrap bottom, heavily wrap them on all sides. And I really try to wrap with a lot of overkill. And then again, I make sure that we buffer those sides. So I don't want this tile directly against that sidewall. We want to make sure that there is just a little bit of padding. And if possible, uh, this would also be a great time in between each tile if you can to just put a little bit of cardboard. There we go. The last thing that I wanted to cover um, was if you are using cardboard boxes, which again, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, if you are, what I heavily recommend is to do two boxes. In other words, to, to pack a box inside of a box. Um, you can do that with just two cardboard boxes, or you might find that you have one spare Tupperware that you're willing to use to transport things. Um, but you want to reuse this Tupperware for a number of different uh, cardboard boxes that you're using to pack your wares with. Um, and kind of treat this as a reusable secondary box. So to do a box inside of a box scenario, it is quite simple. And again, we're just taking those same uh, beginning philosophies where we just want to have a lot of cushion surrounding it so that any time uh, someone goes and sets this down, you don't have any direct pressure on the ceramics and that there's enough of a cushion in between them uh, to absorb any of that shock. So it's a really simple scenario. Again, I'm just going to line that bottom with enough paper uh, that there is a little flexibility. From then, from there I should say, we'll take our box of wares. Um, this is a funny Budweiser box. <laughs> Yeah, it's the perfect box that I happen to have. Um, and you can see I do have about two and a half to three inches around. If you have a crazy amount of space um, around those sides, like more space than you have packing material, you can really just start grabbing some uh, thicker pieces of cardboard or whatever you need for filler. Uh, but the one thing is you want to make sure that you maintain uh, a minimum of one inch on that outer surround. Once you've placed uh, your, sec your box that actually is filled with all the wares, from there you can just go around, get any recycled packing material that you have, 
and just continue to fill around the piece. Okay, and I just want to make sure that I fill around this enough that our box isn't jiggling around. Or in other words, when I go to jiggle this, the whole crate moves and it's not the box wiggling with inside the greater box. Um, make sure that you fill the packing material on the top uh, just to keep uh, that packing material from coming out and loosening up and, and popping uh, or, or kind of creating air pockets within what you packed. Um, but from here, you should be set to transport stuff. Um, so just remember to take your time. I think that a lot of breaking happens uh, either because we rush the bottom and we don't put enough cushion um, or we're just a little bit too hasty or aggressive as we go to pack that material around. Um, so the, those key advices are, are really take your time. Um, use either really nice crates that are, are strong and durable or use a box inside of a box uh, scenario. Um, think the process out as much as you can. And uh, if you have any questions at all, ask advice. Um, I'm sure somebody else has been in the same scenario you have been in and, uh, and will maybe have some good tips or be able to think outside of the box. Um, no pun intended. Maybe it was. Uh, thank you all. I hope you have a uh, great rest of your week and I can't wait to see you guys um, to start packing some pieces and bringing them on down to me. Okay, be well.